Well, hey everyone, welcome to Church Online. My name is Omar and I serve as a lead pastor here at Christ Fellowship. And thank you so much for tuning in. I love the fact that during the last several weeks that we have, we have not been able to meet physically, you all have stayed engaged watching us online. And just to celebrate a little bit, last weekend and our Easter weekend, we had over 59,000 people. Yeah. 59,000 people log on and experience church online. So thank you so much for staying engaged. And also our small groups, and we have remained meeting uh, via Zoom and Google Hangouts, and they are flourishing. They're having a great time studying God's Word virtually. But here's an area that I'm really proud of our church. In a season where it's easy for us to be inwardly focused, listen, we have remained outwardly focused, and we have been meeting the needs in our community. For example... Over 1,500 people, families, have come to our campuses to receive a box of of, uh, food full of of, of meals so they can take home and spend time with their family for those who have been affected financially. For those elderly people who have not been able to leave their home, we've delivered also a box of food for them and loved them and encouraged them. It's been a great time with them. For all first responders like our nurses and our doctors in our ERs, listen, we have taken a Chick-fil-A so they can enjoy a meal with a little word of encouragement and a little invite card. And this upcoming week, we're going to go to different fire stations with a handwritten note for them, a little video, and also a Publix gift card. So them as a unit, they could go to Publix and get a meal on us. And so, listen, we just want to meet the needs in the community and the reason that we're able to do that is because of your faithful giving. And so thank you so much for your generosity. We've been able to really do so many amazing things because of your faithful giving. And remember, listen, your generosity is still changing lives. So let's continue to be generous during the season so that we can push the gospel of Christ forward, especially during times like these, all right? Well, you know, today's a big day for us because we're starting a brand new series called Survive and Thrive. You know, we don't want to just survive in our walk with the Lord, but we want to thrive in it, right? And so, man, I'm excited to dive into God's Word today, and I'm going to start off by reading John chapter 8, and then Colossians chapter 2, which is our passage for this weekend, all right? So you just follow along as I read. It says this, so Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth. And the truth will set you what? Will set you free. And then in Colossians chapter 2, it says this. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, as you have been set free by him, so walk in who? So walk in him. That is the word of the Lord. You know, one of the ministries that we are just so blessed to have here at CF is our prison ministry. And I don't know if you know this, but we have a team of people that go out every single week to seven different institutions to love on them, encourage them, and to share the message of the gospel with them and and to really build them up. And we have seen God do some tremendous things in the prisons just this year. We have seen 55 different people come to know Christ as Savior. Isn't that amazing? And so let's give a virtual clap to our prison ministry team. Thank you so much for your diligence and for your efforts. Listen, God is using you in a powerful way among people that oftentimes are forgotten in our society. So thank you so much for all you do. We love you so, so much. You know, as I was talking to Idania Peralta, who oversees our prison ministry, She was sharing with me that one of the side effects that most people don't realize is that when people finish their sentence and go out back into freedom, go back into the real world, they don't thrive as you would expect. In fact, when they leave prison, they end up struggling mightily. And there are several reasons for that. For one, they don't have the opportunities that people without a record have, so that's an issue for them. For other people, they don't have the friends and family to surround them, to encourage them, to really help them along the way. But here's the biggest reason. When they leave that old life, when they leave prison, listen, they don't know how to act and to live a free life. You know, they don't know now how to live a positive life. 
See, for so many years, they've been in bondage, they've been in prison, that when they go into freedom, right, that when they go into, this, into, into the real world again, listen, they don't know how to act. They don't, they don't know what to do. And it's easy for them to go back to what's easy. It's easy for them to go back to what's familiar. And so they get really, they go back to their old life. They start doing the things they used to do before. And it's sad to say, but many of them go back into prison for doing the same crimes they did before. And so it's really a vicious cycle for many people in the system. But let me just bring all of that over to our time together on this weekend. Because what an image of what many Christians experience once they start their walk with Christ. And by that I mean that just like a prisoner that has been set free struggles to stay free. And oftentimes they get sucked back into their old life. Listen, just like that. And here's the big idea for this weekend. Many Christians who have been set free from their sin struggle to stay free. And it's easy for them that once are in their walk with the Lord to be sucked in back into their old life. You know, they start going back to their old friends. They go back to that one relationship. They go back to that lifestyle and they get sucked in back into the old ways of being. And as a result, many people struggle in their Christian walk because they keep kind of flirting back with their old life. And who knows? Maybe you're watching right now and that's you. Because you're thinking, Pastor Roma, listen, that's me to the T. Ever since I started my walk with Christ, man, I've struggled. And living in a city like Miami doesn't make it any easier. So, Pastor, how can I just not only just survive my Christian walk, but how can I thrive in my walk with the Lord? Because I want to thrive. Well, we're going to find out from Colossians chapter 2, all right? So if you have your Bibles turned to Colossians chapter 2, you can take out a little piece of paper and you can write notes or you can load our, uh, uh, load our app and you can follow along there with us. But today I have three thoughts for us today on how to survive and thrive in our walk with Christ. Write this down as point number one. To survive and thrive, listen, we need to walk in Christ. Walk in the Lord. Let's go back to the passage. Let's go to the passage for today. It says this. It says, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk, and what's the, small, what's the next word? So walk in him. Now circle the word in right there in your Bibles. Because it may seem like a small, insignificant word, but it has massive implications for you and for me. See, the Apostle Paul here is writing to the church in Colossae, and that church, that city, had a fusion of different religious influences. You know, you had the Jewish influences, uh, you had the Gnostics, and you had all these other pagan religions. And even though they all had different messages, listen, they all had one thing in common. And it was was that that their prophet or their priest or their seer, that they had more knowledge and more truth than the other leaders. And so when Paul here is writing to them, he wants them to, make, he wants them to know that their walk with Christ is much more than just following the teachings of Christ. It's about walking in him, in Christ. See, Paul here is echoing John chapter 15 when the Lord was with his disciples and he looked at them right in the eye and he said, abide in me and I in you. So it's interesting that this concept of abiding in Christ or walking in Christ appears more than a hundred times in the New Testament. And it's what makes Christianity so distinct compared to all the other uh, world religions. You see, when Buddha says, listen, when Buddha says, I know the way that you should go, Jesus comes and says, listen, not only do I know the way, I am the way. You see the difference? He's saying, I am the way. When Muhammad says, oh, I know the truth. I know the truth about God. Jesus shows up and he says, listen, not only do I know the truth about God, I am the truth. And when Confucius says, listen, I I know the way that we should live. Jesus says, no, listen, 
I am the life. And because I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, then therefore abide in me. Walk in me. Now, you may be out there thinking, Pastor, how does one abide in Christ? How does one walk in Christ? It sounds just so, so odd. How do you walk in him? Well, write this down as big number two. To survive and thrive and walk in Christ, you need to be rooted in Christ. Rooted in Christ. Let's go back to the passage. Listen to what it says. He says, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. And what's the next word? Rooted. Rooted in him. Now, in your Bible, circle the word rooted right there. Because the word, the word root, because the first imagery that Paul gives us here is that of a tree and where it draws its nourishment from. You know, whenever I think of a, of a root getting nourishment, I always think of the, of the trees along the side, the road of Old Color Road here in Miami. You know, if you've ever driven past that, that, down that road, it's a beautiful drive. And the reason, the reason it's so beautiful is because you have these huge trees just enveloping the entire road. But what makes these trees so majestic it's not simply just their sheer size, but it's their complex root system that, where they draw nourishment and they draw strength. In fact, because of that root system, because of that nourishment, they have been able to sustain storm after storm after storm after storm. And so that's the imagery that, that Paul is trying to paint here because it's the same way with Christ. See, if we want to grow and thrive in our walk with the Lord, then we need to be rooted in the Lord, in him. See, folks, in Christ is where we draw the patience in those times of waiting. In Christ is where we find, where we draw the wisdom in the middle of those difficult decisions. And Christ is where we draw and experience God's love so that we can love the unlovable. In Christ is where we experience forgiveness of sin so that we can forgive those who hurt us. And in Christ is where we find strength in the middle of the most painful, difficult seasons in our life. You know, this past year, as I shared with, as I shared with you before, uh, the, the, the times leading up to my, the death of my grandmother was very difficult for me. And I remember times that Ashley would come home and I would be in the kitchen, you know, doing some dishes and cleaning up, and I would just be sobbing there. And I knew that I just needed to go and abide in Christ. And so I decided to just to pray and fast for three days, and I would just go to the Lord and read and, and pray and, and sing songs of praise to Him. I would just spend time with the Lord and it's amazing that in the middle of all that, in the middle of such a sad moment in my life, I find myself in him, rooted in him. And, and family, there, it's something that, listen, unless that you have experienced it yourself, I can't explain it. You know, to, to, be, to abide in Christ, to walk in Christ is something that's reserved for those who trusted Christ as Savior, who have a relationship with God, that are the children of God. But, but, but don't miss what I'm trying to, to say here, because the Christian life, it's not just about following some rules. Listen, that is dead religion, but rather the Christian life, it's about abiding, finding your nourishment, finding your strength in the living Christ, in the person of Christ, and not just his teachings, but in the actual person of Christ. See, that's why the Lord said in John 15, he said this, he said, whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Listen, I don't know what is going on in your life in the midst of this COVID-19 season. I think everyone is going through something in one way, shape, or form. Maybe you've lost someone that you love. Uh, maybe someone uh, that you know is sick and that's been affecting you. Perhaps uh, your struggle right now is financial. Maybe you've been laid off. Maybe a pay decrease 
Maybe your business is struggling, your practice is shutting down. Listen, we are all going through something here. But here's what I will tell you. The only way that the children of God are able to go through this season is by finding our strength in the Lord, by rooting ourselves in Christ in such a way that we draw all of our strength and all of our hope and everything we are, that we root ourselves in him. But you see, walking in Christ is not only being rooted in him, but also, write this down as big number three. Listen, to survive and thrive and walk in Christ, listen, you need to build your life upon Christ, upon Christ. Let's go back to, to the passage again. It says this. It says, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted, and what's the next phrase? And built up in him. Now circle the phrase built up. Because it's interesting that Paul mixes his metaphors here. You know, trees are rooted down, right? And buildings are built up. And so the question is, why would Paul mix metaphors of trees and buildings? And I think it's because they connote distinct ideas that, uh, of the point that he's trying to make. You see, a tree represents life and nourishment. But a building represents a, 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 strong, a strong foundation and, just, and strength. And so here's the idea. We obtain our strength and our life and everything we need from Christ, right? We're rooted in him. And then, listen, then we build our life upon Christ. See, if you want to not only survive the Christian life but thrive the Christian life, you need to be sure that every single area of your life is founded in Christ, on Christ. See, this is why Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 7. He said, and everyone who then hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall. Why? Because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. You know, I'm convinced that one of the reasons that so many people struggle in their walk with the Lord is not because Jesus is not a part of their life. Listen, Jesus is a part of their life. But the reason is because they never put Christ as the foundation of their life, the foundation of every area of their life. And so in many ways, if, if, if their life was like a house, they treated it just like a couch, just like a couch in the house. And let me explain what I mean by that. Here we have a couch, right? And just think of your couch when you first buy your couch, the one you have at home. Listen, you went to the store and you were excited and you were pumped about it, you paid for it, you got it delivered, and when you got it at home, you were taking pictures of it, you were texting your friends, your family, your mom, your dad, hey, I got a new couch, I love it, it's so comfy, and uh, you, you were excited about it. And then once you started living with the couch, you went to it for comfort, right? You, got, you sat in the couch, you watched Netflix, you watched whatever, Hulu, watched the TV, the news, and you found comfort in it, you had a great time. When you were tired and, and when you were sick and you were just very weary, you went to the couch, you laid down on the couch, you found rest in the couch, right? So you went to the couch for, for comfort, for rest, for all these different things. But then came a point where things changed. Your style changed, your, your state of life changed, something happened at home. And guess what? The good old couch was no good anymore. And so you either moved it to another room so no one sees it, or perhaps you just gave it away, but you got rid of it. And so even though at one point it was an important part of your life, of your, of your home, now no longer it is. And, and folks, you know where I'm going with this. 
Same thing with the Lord at times, with Jesus. Because when you met the Lord, you were excited about the Lord, right? You met him, you put your trust in him, you started your walk with him. You were excited, you were telling people about him, you were inviting people to church, you were doing all these things. And as you started your walk, you found comfort in Christ. When things were going wrong, you found rest in Christ, right? And so you would go to the Christ, but something happened in your life, something took place, and, and, and just your relationship with God, with God changed. You know, you didn't need him anymore, it wasn't the same anymore, so you maybe uh, moved him to a, a, a back corner of your life, or maybe you even walked away wholeheartedly. But folks, here's what I'm trying to say. Listen, Jesus Christ cannot be just a part, a couch, a part of your life. If you want to thrive in your Christian walk, listen, Jesus Christ cannot be a part of your life. He needs to be, listen, he needs to be the foundation of your life. He needs to be the one who holds up everything in your life. Just like the foundation of the home holds up everything inside your home, like a couch or like a TV of everything, same thing with Christ. He needs to be the foundation of your life. You know what happens oftentimes? People view the Lord as just a part of their life. I, I, they compartmentalize the Lord. You know, in their mind, they have their relationship with the spouse their relationship with their kids, they have their business, their career, their hobbies, and oh yeah, and the Lord as well. And so he's just a part of their life, but he's not the foundation of your life. And so because of it, man, a lot of people really just struggle in their walk and they wonder why. And so just ask yourself these questions. You know, when you're in the middle of this uh, quarantine at home and you and your spouse are going at it, you know how it is sometimes, and you're blowing up and you're having these huge disagreements. Listen, and you're trying to get the last word, who's going to win this argument? The question, ask yourself this, who's going to determine your actions and the decision? Are you going to get the last word? Are they going to get the last word? Or is Jesus going to have the final say about the issue? Or is Jesus going to be the one that determines how you act and how you respect your spouse? So can he be the foundation of your relationship or just a part of it? Or maybe you're still in the dating scene. Maybe you're in high school or you're a little older and you're in the dating life. And you really like this guy, this girl. Who's going to determine how far you go physically with that person? Is he going to determine how far you go? How physically, how physical you get? Are you going to determine that? Or is Jesus going to be the one who determines how far you go? See, he could be a part of your relationship, your dating life, or he can be the foundation of your relationship, of your dating life. Maybe you're facing a big decision in your life and you're trying to figure out what the right choice is. So you're, th- you're listening to your parents, you're listening to that friend of yours, you're listening to the TVs, you're listening to yourself, and you're trying to figure out what should I do in this situation, or this Christ is the one who determines what you're going to do. See, he could be a voice in that decision, or he can be the determining voice in that decision. Or maybe when it comes to your finances, you know, you make money, you work, you, there's income in the family, you're getting a stimulus check. I say, who determines how you handle your finances? Does your spouse determine how, what you do? Do you determine what you do? Does, that, does an outside consultant, uh, financial advisor, determine what you do with your finances? Or is your finances founded on Jesus Christ, and he's the one who determines what you do? So you've got to ask yourself these questions. In fact, if you think about those areas in your life that are in shambles, let's just be honest, that you're struggling and these things are not the way they they were supposed to be, chances are it's because Christ is not the foundation of that area in your life. You probably build that life, that area in your life with your own strength, with your own wisdom, with your own desires, and Christ may have been a part of it, but he wasn't the foundation of it. And here's what happens. Storms do come into life, don't they? A storm will come into your marriage. A storm will come into your family life. A storm will come in with your children. A storm will come into your, into your businesses, into your career. And listen, if, if, 
if those areas in your life, if your life is not founded in Christ and according to what his will and his, and his desire for your life, listen, when that storm comes, just like the passage says, if it's built on anything else but Christ, it's like it's built on sand and it's going to wash away. It's going to start crumbling and you're going to start seeing the effects of not fi- putting the foundation of that area in your life being Jesus Christ. And just think about it practically. You cannot honestly expect for God to bless that area in your life if he's not the foundation of it. I mean, how hypocritical could we be to expect God to bless our specific area in our life, but he's not the foundation of it. He's not the one that determines our actions and decisions in that specific area. But listen, if you want to not only survive, but thrive in your Christian walk, and I think we all do, then listen, Christ has to be the foundation. You need to be rooted in him, and he needs to be the foundation of every single thing you do. Amen? Maybe you're out there right now, you're thinking, Pastor, man, as I'm listening to this message, I'm reading this passage, man, I realize that my life is not founded on Christ. In fact, I've been, tr- I've been f- f- you know, building my life on everything else in this world except the Lord, and I know that I need a relationship with God. I need to make him the foundation of my life. So how can I do that? Well, let's go back to the passage. Listen to what it says. It says, therefore, as you have received Christ. You see, the way that you make him the foundation, the way that you become rooted in him is by receiving Christ Jesus the Lord. Now you're thinking, well, how do you receive him? All right? how, how do you receive Christ? Well, listen, John chapter 1, verse 12 says this, but to all who did receive him, and here's a key phrase, who believed in his name, who believed in his name, to them he gave them the right to become the children of God. See, the only way to start a relationship with Christ, to receive Christ, is simple is by putting your faith and your trust in him. And the Bible says that the moment that you put your faith and your trust in Christ, he forgives you of everything you've ever done, everything you've been ashamed of, he forgives you. He, the Bible says that he adopts you as a son and daughter, and you start a father-son, a father-daughter relationship with your heavenly father. And then he becomes the foundation of your life, and he guides you and helps you build, rebuild your life. But you got to come to a point where you put your trust and your faith in him. And so if you're ready, I want to lead you through a prayer. And I always like to remind people, listen, this is not a poem or script. We came up here at CF. This is us just helping you talk to your heavenly father for the very first time. And so as I lead you through this prayer, you pray this to God, not to me. I'm only a man. I cannot do anything for you. But you pray this to God because he's waiting And he wants to start a relationship with you, all right? So if that's you, let's all bow our heads and pray this with me. Father, today I realize of your great love for me. And I have realized that all of my life, my foundation has been on everything but you. But today I come before you, Lord, and I put my trust in you. I put my faith in you. I surrender my life to you. And I ask you for forgiveness of my sins. Everything I've done, all my mess ups, everything I'm ashamed of, I ask you for forgiveness. And Father, I ask you not to give me everlasting life. And Lord, for the rest of my life, as I walk in you, Lord, Father, I pray that you will help me build a life And find my roots in you, O Lord, so that I could thrive in my Christian walk until the day I see you face to face. And I cannot wait to spend eternity with you, O Lord. Thank you, Father, for saving me today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, if you came to know Christ at all, you know, at all homes, uh, go ahead and give it up for them. Listen, we love you so much. We're so proud of you that you took the step. Listen, if that was you, make sure you go to the website right below me right now. 
And I go on the website on cfmiami.org, and there you fill out the connection card and check off, today I came to know Christ, and someone from our team, one of our pastors, will follow up with you and, and encourage you and help you take steps now in your new walk with Christ, all right? So make sure you do that uh, because it will help you take uh, further now steps with the Lord. Well, then be back next weekend as for our second week of uh, Survive and Thrive. And uh, we're going to see how there is really a battle for our mind on who we're going to listen to, the world or Christ. And so, man, I want to encourage you, be back next week. It's going to be awesome, right? Until then, have a great weekend. Love you all.